Grace and peace. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to 1450 AmeriCare Road right here in Denison, North Carolina, where my pastor is none other than Elder William T. Winston at Greater Refuge in Henderson. We thank you for joining us this morning as we start our Sunday school lesson. Our lesson text will be coming from Exodus chapter number 20, verse 1 through 11. But before we get started, as always, let's go into a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we bless you and we praise you. We glorify you and we magnify you. We give you honor and we give you all the praise. For this is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. For you made this day with us in mind. And on this day, you've given us all we need and all we want and all we can handle for this day. And we are grateful today, God. Father, we repent of our sins and our transgressions, uh, the things we've done knowingly, things we've done unknown. We ask for your forgiveness and your mercy. Heavenly Father, as we gather in your name, we ask you, Father, be in the midst, Lord God, and send us a word from high God, a word that will grow us, that will mature us, Father, that we will come to know you more. And Lord God, that we will know the God that we serve. Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have fallen by the wayside, that Lord God, that Lord, you would send somebody that they're away, Father, that they would touch their hearts, and give them a word of encouragement. We pray for those that has grown weak, Father, that you would strengthen them. We pray for our leaders on today, God, that, Lord God, that you would give them the wisdom and the knowledge, the understanding that they need to lead and guide us, your people, during this time. We pray, Father God, for those that are bereaved today. We call out the Taylor family. We ask for you to comfort them, strengthen them, Father. Give more family, Lord God, the Queen family. Lord God, there's so many people, Lord God, have lost loved ones, but we know you are God of comfort. Yeah. We ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, to bless us today, Father, that there will be nothing but you, Lord God, that you will receive glory, and Lord God, that your word will be magnified. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen, and thank you, Lord God. Once again, our Sunday school lesson will be coming from Exodus chapter number 20. Verse 1 through 11. And it reads on this wide. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless, that taketh his name in vain. Mm -hmm. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, or nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath and hallowed it. And the word of the Lord is already blessed. Mm -hmm. On last week, we talked about can I write that here? obedience and respect to God. How God commanded our obedience and our respect. He he deserves our obedience and our respect yeah. because of who he is. He's our creator. He deserves it. But today we're talking about obedience and worshiping God alone. Our golden text comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 through 3. Say, I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other God before me. He's the only God, the only true and living God. We've been talking about how God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, how he established his servant Moses over them, how he gave them instructions on the life that they were supposed to live for him and, and worshiping him and obeying him and living for him as his chosen people. As the body of Christ, we are God's chosen people. We are God's. 
And because of that, our, we have a covenant with him also. A covenant is one of grace. And while God extends grace and mercy our way, we are not supposed to take advantage of that. We're not supposed to do anything that's contrary to what the word of God says. That's why it's talking about obedience and worshiping God alone. Because sometimes in our frailty of human flesh, we forget that we serve a great God who has who demands reverence and respect. We forget that because we are so frail that we serve a great God that's able to keep us. We forget that, uh, be, that we serve a God that's not on the same level as us. And so we, I talked about last week, how sometimes we're going to treat him like our buddy, but he's, he's not our buddy. As much as he's our friend, because Jesus said, I call you friend, but as our friend, if anybody have a real friend, they know you know you don't treat your friend the way you treat your enemy. You want your friend to love you. You want your friend to like you. You want your friend to have your back for you. You want your friend to tell you what's best for you. If you start having a friend that does not tell you what's best for you, and they allow you to do anything and care and take you down the wrong way, they're not your friend. They're not your friend. But your friend will do with the, your friend will tell you stuff that'll make you hurt, make you cry. But it's for your best because they have your best interests at heart. And that's the kind of God that we serve. The word of God said, truly greater love has no man than this, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. So he laid his life down for us, but he have expected things for us also. I mean, he expects us to do certain things. And one of the things he expects us to do is to obey him. And to obey him in worshiping. So we're going to verse first verse, and God spake all these words saying, he spoke these words to Moses, giving him directions concerning what he expected from the Israelites. I am the Lord thy God. Notice that word is singular there. He said, me by myself. I'm the one in charge which have brought thee out of the land. He said, I did it by myself. Nobody else helped me. Pharaoh didn't help you because if you stop and think about it, Pharaoh tried to keep you from leaving. He said, Moses couldn't do it because when Moses told Pharaoh to let you go, he couldn't do it. He wouldn't do it just based on Moses' word. He said, I brought you out of the, out of the house of bondage. He said, I did it with my strong hand. I did it. It was through and by my miracles. I did it by myself. It was because I said to Pharaoh, let my people go. He wanted to establish who he was. And he wanted the people to know who he was. Because he wanted them to reverence him. Another thing we talked about last week was that God doesn't want us to fear him. He's scared of him. He wants us to serve him because we love him. Yeah. He don't want us to say, I go to church because I'm scared I'm going to hell. No, he want us to come to church because we are in relationship with him, because we love him. It's just like when a man and a woman is married. We, they don't want to, I got to go home because if I don't go home, that man, he's so mean. He, no, that's not love. When she's, I want to go home because I want to be with my husband. I love him. I want to be right where he's at. And that's the same way it is with God. God wants us to come to church because we love him. And in our loving him, we love his people. So now we don't forsake the assembly of ourselves together as the matter of some is. We want to be amongst the saints. Yes. That's the kind of relationship that God wants. He uh -huh. said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Because he knew the heart's man. The word of God says that the man, heart's, the man of heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. He said, I, I know you. I search you. I know what your heart is. He talks about the sin in our heart. How we are liars, we are murderers, adulterers, we are thieves. He said, we, anything that a man, a mind can imagine is evil is already in us. It's already. It's not in one person. It's in every one of us that's walking on two legs. Now, don't, don't matter your position in the church. Don't matter who, how much money you got. It don't matter what race you are. Don't matter what sex. It's in your heart to be evil. It's already there. We got the propensity to sin, which is why we are supposed to extend grace to other people. Mm -hmm. But let me even explain that because we think that we're supposed to keep on extending grace to them. But if you stop and read the scriptures, even God, he said, I'm long suffering towards you. He said, I'm not willing to end your parish. I ever. If that is your choice, that's right. if that's your choice, he said, I'm not going to stop you from perishing because that's your choice. He gave us free will. But anybody 
that walking in the flesh. Because David said this way. He said, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. So I was born a sinner. And it had nothing to do with what I did when I was born. I was just born a sinner. Because of sin that came through the line. Beginning with Adam. I was just born a sinner. And so he says now, you can't have no other gods for me. Meaning, you can't make unto you something that say this is God. Because you've never seen me. If we stop and think about our lessons before, what God told people most do, he said, I want you to come to the foot of the mountain. I want you to bring all the people. First of all, he said, I need them to clean themselves up. I need them to wash their clothes and I need them to, to um, clean themselves up, sanctify themselves because I'm going to meet them. You can't come any kind of way. That's why we don't need to think we can come in the presence of God any kind of way and think it's okay that he's going to meet us. He's not going to meet us. When the only time you can come to God any kind of way to, and he's going to meet you is when you come in and repent and say, Lord, I need you to um, save me. Lord but past that, when you already supposed to be saved, you're already in relationship with God. You don't just come up in, in God's presence in any kind of way. Because what he said to, to Moses was, they can't come up the mountain any kind of way. They're in sin. They, they got a sin for nature. And if I, because of my holiness, because I'm such a holy God, if, I, if they come too far, they'll die. Jesus. We don't think now that we can go in the presence of God and, he, he, and we won't die. But we'll still die. Because the word of God tells us that God don't change. He's the same God today that he was yesterday and forevermore. So he never changes. So now he said, don't put stays down there and tell the people, don't come up the mountain. Don't try to peep. And we talked about this last week. Don't try to peep through and see what I look like and what's going on. They need to stay with their distance because they're unholy. Because they're not clean. And he said, so now because you don't know what I look like, don't try to make something and say it's me. Because first of all, we got to remember Everything that we see with the natural eye, God created himself. Yes, so how can a person create something that already exists? Because when you create something, what it means is that you've taken it from nothing and make something out of it. Nothing. It means that when God says, um, let there be light, there was darkness and light appeared. But when he started coming to create man, he said, and, and he made man in his image out of his life. And he said, and he created the ground, and he created the, the land. He created this, he created. That means he took nothing and made something. So now because of that, there's nothing that you can see with a physical eye that can identify that this is God. And it says in verse number Four, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. It means you can't go out here and, and decide I'm going to make a fish and call this God. Because God understood that in the land that they came out of Egypt and those surrounding areas, they served idol gods. In other words, they served gods that they made in, with their own hand. They, they, they made them out of things that they saw. And God said, you can't do that because that's not who I am. If you're going to be in my family... You can't do that. You can't just say, this is my God and serve. And even now, we find people that serve God. People serve, they, let the, they serve their children. Jesus. They serve their spouses. Mm -hmm. They serve their homes. They serve their money. Mm -hmm. Everything comes before God. But he says, right, he said, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them. So now, because the people in the land were making um, gods and saying, this is God. They were making um, uh, 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 sculpturing cows. Because we're going to find out in the scripture, if you read, that what the Israelites did was they did what the people, the nations around them that they came out of did. They made golden calves and said, this is God. This is the God that brought us out. A bondage out of Egypt. But God said you can't do that. You're in covenant with me. And when you're in covenant with God. There's some things that you just can't do. Oh, Jesus. Not when you want to please God. Amen. Not when you want to serve. Not when you say I'm in relationship with God. It's just like being in covenant with your spouse again. Because everybody talk about getting married. They want to be married. They talk about my husband and my wife. And all this and that. But you know. If you're in relationship with that person, 
You want to please that person. You want what's best for that person. So now, you ain't going to go outside that marriage and say, I want to please somebody else too. You're not going to see them. Once again, let's go back to the friendship thing. Because I say if they're your friend, they don't want to see you going down the wrong path. They don't want to see you doing the wrong thing and say they're your friend. No one is going to lead to your demise. No one is going to lead to your destruction. Not if they're your friend. Not according to what Jesus said, what God said, what he said. Greater love has no man than this, that a man would lay down his life for his friend. So he called his friend because he was willing to lay his life down. For. So if they're calling you their friend, then why are not, they are not willing to tell you truth? That's right. Something that's going to help you. Why are they not willing to show you the right way? Why are they not willing to, to be an example and show you the love? I think about um, one of my, when my, um, friend, my sister-in-law, Deborah, she said to me, she said, I love Aunt Jeannie, but every time Aunt Jeannie would whip us, she would say, I hope you know this hurts worse for me than it does you. Because I love you so much. And I hate to do it, but I got to punish you. Because you're going down the wrong way. Because that's love. That's what love does. Yes. That's what love does. Yes. She yes. said, because I see you going in the wrong direction. So I got to correct you now. Because later on, it's going to have an effect on you. That's what love does. Yes. Love don't say, okay, you just keep going down that oh, wrong yeah. road that, and run into oh, that yeah. Big Mac and, and the Big Mac truck. And then... When you get there and you'll see it, you'll be off. No, that's not what love does. That's, that's not what friends does. Sense. That's not what a friend does. That's right. But he said, don't, don't make unto you anything. No, anything you've seen is not me. Because you ain't never seen me. He said, thou shalt not bow down thyself them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. In other words, he said, listen. I know who I am. And ain't nobody going to take my place. Now, you're not going to... Take what I do and give somebody else credit for that because I'm jealous for me. I, I'm not jealous for you. I'm jealous for my image. That's what God said. He said, listen, because I know who I am and because you are my people and I want you to have what I got for you and I want what's best for you. I don't want nobody else to get credit for that. He's, and he said right here, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. He said, even to the third and fourth generation are going to have to give an account for your sin. It's a domino effect. And I've talked about this so many times before. We think that we do stuff and it just stops with us. No, it don't stop with us. It becomes a sin in our bloodline. And we pass that sin on to the next generation. Who in turn pass it on to the next generation. And if that curse is never broken, it keeps on to the next generation. That's why it's so important for us not to play church. I heard the pastor said tell say today <laughs> about it being fake. Fake is just fake. Mm -hmm. We can't have fake relationships with God. We can't take a fake um, word and think that's God. That's fake is just fake. fake. You can't do nothing with it. Mm -hmm. It's just fake. He talk about how you take people put on plastic or clever and they call it leather. Mm -hmm. But that ain't leather. That's fake. Exactly. It's the same thing with God. With your relationship with God, you can't do anything, any kind of way, and anything you in a relationship with God. That's fake. You can't tell people anything and it ain't in line with the word of God. That's fake. And he said right here, he said it would be this iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. That's a person that hate God. Anytime you go against God. Anytime you go against what the word of God said, anytime you go against who Jesus said he is, you against God. <laughs> Ain't no other way to say it. Anytime I look at you and I tell you, knowing you're doing the wrong thing, that's okay. That's a fake religion. I tell people all the time, if God don't like it, I don't like it either. I don't have a whole lot of friends, but that's okay. Because one day I got to go before God and I'm going I'm to hear him say, well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. I'm trying to be judgmental, and I'll tell them quickly. If you don't want the truth, don't ask me. Because I got to tell you what the words say. I can't, I, I, I can't fix it up for you. Because if I fix it up so you will be happy, I might not make God happy. So don't ask me. Ask somebody else. And she said right here, it says, 
and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandment. That's the key right there. He's, you got to love me. And in your loving me, you got to keep my commandments. We tell people, you can love God, do anything you want to do. The devil is a lie. Ain't no truth in that. I said to somebody, because they said to me, they said, oh, I thought when, y'all been studying the Bible so much, how much can you study the Bible? How much can you get? It's still the same word. And I let them have their say. And I said to them, I said, well, I hear you saying all that, but I got one better for that. I said, it's, it's, it's summed up in one word, love God. And they were like, huh? I said, yeah. Love God. Because when you love somebody, you want to know them. If you love somebody, you want to please them. If you love God, you want to know everything you can know about him so you can please him. And now in your doing to please him, you will learn how to love yourself and love somebody else. Because that's what his word says. But now you can't say to me, I love you, Sister Sharon, and then you don't love God. Because first of all, how can you love me? When you don't know, don't know love. Because the word of God says God is love. Also, you can't walk around here saying I got a problem with Sister Sharon and I love God. That's another fake word. That ain't no truth in that. Because regardless of what I do, when I do it or how I do it, what the word of God says when you love him, he said what you need to do is get it right. Your tithes and offer means nothing to me. You need to go back, get it right with your brother and your sister, and then come back, and I'll forgive you. And if you don't forgive them, I ain't going to forgive you either. So now, if we want to serve God, to reverence God, to worship God, we got to make sure our hearts are pure before God. We got to make certain that what we are doing is pleasing up to God. What's I said before, in a relationship with anybody, when you say you want that relationship to grow, you got to get to know them. Right. And so now you can't get to know them if you don't spend no time with them. Right. That means you're doing more than just coming to church on Sundays. How many times do you pick the Bible up Monday through Saturday? How many times do you pray and have a conversation with God Monday through Saturday? How many times do you... Go out to do his will. Seek to do his will. Because he said when the Holy Ghost come upon me. You shall become my witnesses. And I need you to compel thine men and women. Who have you witnessed to? And when was the last time you witnessed to them? Because these are his commandments. And he said. And showing mercy unto thousands that love me. And keep my commandments. Because now we in covenant with God. This is the covenant. This is the Mosaic covenant. But now. Jesus gave us some stuff to do too because he told the disciples, he said, Shall by these signs some men know you are my disciples indeed when you show love to the brethren. When you show love. So that's the greatest commandment of all Jesus said is to love the Lord the God with all your heart, all your might, all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So now how am I going to say I love God and love myself and every time somebody come by me um, that I don't like, I get on the phone and talk about them. Every time they do something I don't like, I'm calling somebody and talk about them. But I love them. Don't love me. I tell people all the time, don't, don't even love me. If all you're going to do is something against me, don't love me. Because I already got to fight the enemy. I don't need to fight the saints. I already got to fight Satan. I don't need to fight the saints. It says right here in 7, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. And that's not just talking about when we um, curse. That's in vain too. But sometimes our conversation get a little bit too far out there. We start saying things like, um, we start swearing. We start saying, um, we're going to do things for God. We start making promises to God that we ain't going to keep. We start um, saying things 
in the presence of God that we know not true. We start um, taking God's word and putting it in a place it shouldn't be. All that is in vain because it's not necessary. One of the things that we, 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 we need to understand as the people of God is that um, if we want to please God and we really love God, we need to learn how to, um, our conversation. We need to learn how to taper our conversation. We don't need to say everything. Just because it comes to our mind, that don't mean we need to say it. Just because we, um, three times seven, that don't mean we can, we need to just, we can just say it. Well, that's just how I feel. Okay, keep saying everything that you feel. Because one of the things about this is, um, we supposed to be walking by faith and not by our feelings. Mm -hmm. We supposed to be living in the spirit realm, not in the natural realm. Sitting in he heavenly places. Thou shalt not take the Lord, the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless to take it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. All we got to do is look around us. That's all we got to do. Because on the Sabbath day, it's holy and sanctified unto God. It says, six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's a day of rest when all you're supposed to be doing is serving God. But we got more things to do. And I said, me, I ain't just talking about y'all. I'm talking me too. We got so much to do. We don't have time to come to um, Sunday school. We ain't got time to come to Bible study. We ain't got time to come to morning worship. Because I got to do this and I got to do that. But then when you want something from God, you think God's supposed to have time for you, for me. So now I can forsake the assembly of ourselves together. I can miss church. I can miss Sunday school. Because I'm listening to it on Facebook. I'm listening to it on this. That ain't what God said. He said forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. He said forsake not coming together in person. I think one of the worst things that happened was when we had the COVID pandemic. Because what happened was the people decided I can look at Facebook and call in and I don't have to come to church. And so now that they're out the pandemic, they still don't want to come to church. They still want to forsake the assembly of their selves together. Well, you don't know my situation. You're right. I don't know your situation. God do, though. Because we need to be careful with that. Well, God know my heart. He already said he knew your heart. He said it's deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. So don't say God know your heart. He does know your heart. Do you know he said your heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked? Wicked. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son. Son, you stay at home today. You ain't got to go to church. Cut the grass. Nor thy daughter. Daughter, you stay at home today. Cook the dinner. Thy man servant. You don't have to come serve. You don't have to come either. You stay at home and do something else. Thy maid servant. Thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. We got people that visit us and we tell them to stay at home. We stay at home with them. You ain't got to go to church. I'll stay at home with you. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, not because he needed rest, but he set the example for us to see. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and holiday. He set it apart and said it's a day that's holy, unto me so man can refresh his body and in our obedience to God's word it's a form of worship because that's what God wants God wants worship now God don't need all the other stuff that we try to give him God wants obedience and worship and praise father in the name of Jesus we thank you we bless you we praise you we glorify your holy and righteous name Lord God, for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, God, for choosing us out of all the people in the world to show forth your glory, for calling us by our name, for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. We thank you. 
We thank you, Heavenly Father, because, Lord God, we was headed down a road of destruction, God. And we was enjoying it because we thought it was the best way of life that there could possibly be. But we thank you, Father, that you placed somebody in our lives that knew you. Somebody, Lord God, to be a witness to us. So, God, that we will come out of darkness into your mother's so We thank you for that. We don't take that for granted. We thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy you extended toward us, Lord God, when we were doing things our way, when our mindset was on our mindset, when we wanted to do it our way, the way we wanted, when we wanted to, you was merciful unto us. We say thank you, God, because you could have cut us all. We thank you, Lord God, because you've given us yet another day to get it right with you. We thank you, Father. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the blood that he shed, how he cleanses us. His blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We thank you, Father, because when you see the blood and you look at us, you call us the righteousness. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you because we have been justified by faith in what your son did. Oh, we are grateful today, Father. So many people didn't make it this far, God, but we're still here. Some people, Lord God, didn't wake up this morning, but we're still here. Some people woke up this morning, but they are gone already, but we are still here. We don't take that for granted, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your mercy when we made other things gods, idol gods, little G-O-Ds over you. Lord God, we repent and ask for your forgiveness. Heavenly Father, we ask you even right now, God, as we go through this day, Father, to lead and guide us. Heavenly Father, help us to do what is pleasing unto you. Teach us your ways. We want to know more about you. Because we can't serve you if we don't know you. We can't please you if we don't know you. Oh, Father, give us listening ears and soften our hearts. Give us humble hearts, God, that we will be teachable, Lord God. Because when we walk in pride, we're not teachable. We think we already Jesus. know. Oh, God, give us humble hearts, humble spirits, that we may be teachable. That you may speak to us, Lord God. That we may become who you have called us to be, Father. More like your son, Jesus Christ. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, God. We thank you for joining us today. We hope you stay right here at 10 o'clock where the word of God will be coming forth. We bid you God's grace and peace. If you have not been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if you have not repented of your sins, you can meet us right here at 145th AmeriCare Road where the pool, the water is always ready for someone to get baptized in. And we have someone to baptize you. And we have clothing for you to put on. And after you're baptized, we have someone right here that will work with you that you may receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Meet us here, 1450 AmeriCare Road. We bid you God's grace and peace. Have a blessed day.